The Surah An-Nisa, verse 34, order to beat women. In order to understand what the Qur'an says about any subject, it is necessary to understand the Qur'an holistically. If you are going to identify a tree, you must first recognize the forest. Without recognizing the forest, trees cannot be identified. The elements in regards to beating women are the human element, the gender element, violence. Here are matters to think about. How does God address human beings? For example, when he says, O sons of Adam, does he distinguish between men and women? He doesn't. Two, there are verses that set special provisions on women. There are a number of verses in uh, uh, a number of provisions which are exclusively for women. Based on a holistic understanding of the Quran, apart from these few verses, the Quran does not distinguish between men and women. The Holy Quran, for example, in the Surah Al Ahsab, chapter 33, verse 35. إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْحَاشِعِينَ وَالْحَاشِعَاتِ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقَاتِ وَالسَّامِعِينَ وَالسَّامِعَاتِ وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ وَالْحَافِذَاتِ وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ عَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Which translates as Indeed, the Muslim men and Muslim women, the believing men and believing women, the obedient men and obedient women, the truthful men and truthful women, the patient men and patient women, the humble men and humble women, the charitable men and charitable women, the fasting men and fasting women, the men who guard their private parts and the women who do so, and the men who remember God often and the women who do so, for them God has prepared forgiveness and a great reward. God speaks of ten qualifications here. These ten qualities are mentioned both for men and women. He means that these devotions are devotions that both men and women have to do. After all, he says that these are the people he will forgive and recompense. In other words, the Quran calls upon the women based on character, not gender. He speaks of a woman's obedience to God not her obedience to her husband. The husband must obey God and the wife must obey God also. As our subservience shall be towards God, our obedience shall be towards God, and our submission shall be to God. We must obey the messenger of God as well. Those who say that women can be beaten act from the perspective that women must obey their husbands. The basic mistake comes from here. In obedience, the husband is not of interest. But God is the one both husband and my wife must obey. In regards to Surah and Nisa, chapter 4, verse 34, in the case of separation, that is, when a separation process is beginning to take place, there are some measures to prevent this separation. Not one, but multiple things to apply in parallel. Advising the couple will be put into practice. The beds will be separated, or in the meantime, the, the wife may go to her father's home, or the husband may leave the home. There can be such temporary separations. If these do not work, it is required to nominate an arbitrator for the parties, in, uh, as described in chapter 4, verse 35. If the spouses work towards success... God says that he will make them successful. Nevertheless, this verse does not contain a command on beating women. In the verse, the word wadribuhunna means towards the aim of continuation of the marriage, if necessary, to save the marriage of the men and the women, leaving the house for a while. Among meanings of the word verb daraba is 
short-term separation, meaning going out or going on a journey. Unfortunately, a prevailing view of women among Arabs led to our female sisters to be alienated from the Quran and Islam. As a result of this false information, some of our young brothers and sisters kept distance from Islam. The Quran addresses a woman not because she is a woman, but through her character, not by gender. It refers to the existence of a temporary separation among a number of options for the continuation of the institution of marriage. There are two examples in this regard in the life of the Prophet. As the Prophet understands this religious religion best, he never raised a hand to any of his spouses despite experiencing problems at home. If the verse commanded to beat, the Prophet had to apply it as such. He's never done anything like that. Beating women is beating humanity. Putting your head on the same pillow as the beaten woman is nothing more than the terrible fate of not knowing what you're doing. Houses are to be each other's paradise. There is no point in turning houses into madhouses. Especially doing this in the name of religion is one of the biggest damages done to religion.